The hearty fans of the Midwest braving the cold and wind of eastern Iowa. Those record highs of five days back have turned to early November bluster. It's the final road trip of the year for Joe Paterno's unbeaten Nittany Lions. It's Big Ten weather for a huge Big Ten game. Kennex Stadium in Iowa City where the Hawkeyes waiting and in the way of the number three team in the country, the Nittany Lions of Penn State. A cold, windy day. It was 74 about four days ago. Now it's more like it should be for the Big Ten. 36 degrees, 25, the wind chill. The wind is blowing like crazy, and we have had snow much of the morning, on and off. We expect more today. This is a team that five of the last six times they've met the Nittany Lions, they have won. Two of those have been in overtime in 02 and 04. As you take a look at the Big Ten standings updated right now, the winners today, Michigan State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Wisconsin, but more importantly, look who's on top and look who's got a chance at a national championship. The only problem is these guys are in the way. Here come the Hawkeye. And we've been here before Bob Greasy, and we've seen it happen before. Iowa coming in with an upset on their mind. But Penn State, 9-0. You want to play off, folks? You got one in the next three weeks. Yeah. Nittany Lions undefeated, and their quarterback back and ready to go. Well, their leader, Daryl Clark, is back from La La Land. Two weeks ago, a concussion. They didn't have a ball game last week. Here's their leader having a great year. He's back and ready to play. Now, Penn State needs to win, obviously, but they need style points. They need to win impressively. They need some pizzazz because all the other teams in the top five in the nation are winning with big numbers and big pizzazz. But now, we've got a lot of change going on in this country. <laughs> I talked to Joe the other day, and he says, well, I could change. You know, I might be able to, you know, if it's 35 to 10, we may run up some more points. So they need a big win here today. Joe coaching from the press box for the fifth week in a row because of that bad hip. But they've got to beat Iowa, and Paul, can Iowa beat Penn State? Well, I talked to Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, Ness, and he told me, he says, what we have to do to beat this team is not slow down the run. We have to stop the run. we got to take the ball out of Kevin Royce or Evan Royster's hands and put it in Clark's hand. And I talked to Ken O'Keefe. The offensive coordinator, you know what he told me? Truthfully, we cannot make one mistake in this game. We cannot put the ball on the ground. We can't give him anything. But we got to hope they kind of help us. You know what? And they also need Sean Green to get his 10th straight 100-yard game. And that's if you want to know about the weather, the track down here is beautiful. The grass is, is dry, everything's good, but the wind is gusting up to about 30 miles an hour. Whenever quarterback throws the ball well today, wins. Just about set for the Hawkeyes and the Nittany Lions. Before we kick it off, we go to the fourth member of our team, Stacy Dale. Stace. Well, Brad, for Iowa this week, being the spoiler, certainly something on the minds of players and coaches. In fact, I spoke with running back Sean Green this week, and he told me that on Thursday, just before practice, players walked into their locker room, and in their lockers, they found a white sheet of paper. On that sheet of paper listed nine different BCS upsets from last season. At the bottom, the matchup of Penn State, Iowa. Big question mark beside Iowa, and the question framed, who's next? So as I bring in the head coach, Kirk Ferentz, coach, what do you guys have to do today to take down this undefeated team? Uh, you know, Penn State's got a great ball club. They're, they're strong in every position, veteran in every position. You know, basically, you just have to play your best. And you hope, hope that they help you a little bit, but you can't count on that. So we've got to play our best. Coach, how do you look to attack Daryl Clark, their quarterback today? He's coming off the concussion. Uh, you know, the thing that impresses me about Penn State, they're so balanced offensively and defensively. So you, you can't load up for any one area. He's had a, a tremendous season. He's a big part of their success, and we're going to have to play honest against them. Coach, how does this wind affect your team? Well, it's going to affect both teams. Uh, you know, I've always felt wind and crowd noise are probably the two biggest factors. Uh, so this is going to impact things a little bit, but it's going to be the same for both teams. All right, thanks, thanks Coach. Stacey. There's a look at that wind, and already it's affected the kicker because they're going to hold the ball on the tee as Iowa won the toss and deferred. Daniel Murray set to kick away to Derek Williams and Chaz Powell. Five and four Iowa, nine and zero oh, Penn State. Here we go. Deep kick, and it'll drag Derek Williams to the back of the end zone. Penn State will start from its own 20-yard line as we take a look at our best buy impact players for the Nittany Lions. Jordan Norwood in that slot always seems to find a place to catch the football. 
Aaron Maben right now leads the Big Ten in sacks, third in the country. And a guy that's always around the football, their leading tackler, Navarro Bowman, the linebacker. So here comes Penn State, so balanced as Kirk just told Stacy. They come in with 226 yards, a game on the ground, 233 per game in the air. Darrell Clark at the controls. And he's going to throw on first down, maybe. And he's got to throw it in the dirt because he got leveled by Christian Ballard. So already affecting Darrell Clark is the defensive front of Iowa. Darrell Clark, junior out of Youngstown, Ohio, a big guy, 235-pounder, and he's a load as a runner. And he's done a very nice job throwing the football this year. He might be on his way to being the Big Ten's most valuable player. Well, he is the Big Ten's pass efficiency leader. That's a combination of a bunch of different things. He's having a great year. Now they go into the shotgun spread offense with three wideouts for Clark on second down and 10. The play fake. Here comes the pressure again, and he overshot his intended receiver. And he got planted again by Matt Crowell that time. So Darrell Clark has felt the presence of the front four of Iowa in two snaps. Take a look at the pass protection. A little fake to Williams going to the right side. I'm a little surprised Penn State coming out throwing the first two passes into a 30 mile an hour win. Matt Kroll and Mitch King are the guts of that Iowa defense, the two defensive tackles. They're both captains. And it's third down and 10. Into a 22 mile an hour wind as Bob is talking about play action. Clark's got pressure again. The ball is out. Iowa trying to cover it. Did they get it? It is Iowa ball, but not a touchdown. Adrian Claiborne forced the fumble, and Christian Ballard's got it. I don't like I don't like the way Penn State started. I know they're going into a big win. Let's take a look. Fake. Get rid of it. That's a fumble. There ain't no doubt that's a fumble. You know, where did they get the football? They spotted it at about the one foot line, but again, we're having a review. Steve Beckman is our replay official. There you see Ballard scrambling for it. And I think his knee was down at the one foot line but while have, his hands might have been in the end zone with the ball. He didn't have, did he have possession of it? Here's another look. Darrell Clark frantically trying to move his arm forward, but I don't think he ever got it to that point. The call. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fourth down at the one yard line. They're is that saying Penn State, State recovered, recovered. That ball? Whoa. So Daryl Clark is the guy that recovered. It didn't look that it, way to us. Well, it looked like both of them may have had possession. It looked like Clark may have had part of it. But also the Hawkeye defensor, defensive man also, Ballard may have had the other half. Jeremy Boone is standing at his own end line to try to punt. And Iowa's got everybody up. They're going to bring the house, it looks like. And why not? He's got a short... About ten and a half yards to work with. Here they come. He got it out of there. And it's fielded on the fly at the 35. Brodell inside the 25. So even though Iowa didn't get the ball deep in Penn State territory, they basically have it there right now. Let's take a look at our Best Buy Impact players for the Iowa Hawkeyes. We talked about Sean Green, who's had a sensational season. He's going to have to have another big day today. Andy Brodell's got to make some plays. Just made a nice play on the punt return right there to give him good field position. And their leader on defense, Mitch King, along with Matt Kroll, those two inside tackles I talked about. And they're something to be reckoned with. So you couldn't ask for a better place to set up shop for Iowa at the Penn State 25 on their opening drive. Cuts back inside the 20, and he's down for a first down at the 14. That's what this young man has done all year long. He's gained over 1,200 yards. He is like a little tank 
235, and he's got good feet and good vision. The number three rusher in the country. Picks up 11 on his first carry of the day. First down, Iowa. Red zone has been a problem for them this year. They're in there already. Green behind his blockers. 10, 5, forget, touchdown. Sean Green just got on Brent Morris, his fullback's butt, and said, I'm following you. Get out of my way. And I say Sean Green needs to get 100 <laughs> yards again for the 10th time in a row. Well, he's, he's on his way. No, is he ever? 14-yard touchdown. Two plays in 25 yards in just 35 seconds of possession. Iowa leads Penn State 7-0. His 12th rushing touchdown of the year. There's a block from his tight end. There's his fullback 36 in front, and he does the rest. Iowa trying to pull a shocker, and they've got an early lead. Well, the wind is going to be a big factor all day long. Daryl Clark on the sideline does not have big hands, so he has a little bit of a problem handling the ball. A lot of quarterbacks who have smaller hands have that problem. Sandeman holds it for Murray, who kicks. This one will be returnable. Derek Williams from the six. Right into the middle of things at about the 22-yard line. To right, Brad, they had big trouble scoring inside the 20. Not that time. Not that time. Now Penn State will try to run it, which is kind of what we thought they'd do on their opening possession. Evan Royster picks up about three. Let's check in with Stacy. Well, Brad, when you guys talk about the wind, if my hair is an indication <laughs> enough of how windy it is, take a look at this flag. I'm down here with all the action. Gusts over 30 miles per hour. And guys, if I don't have any chipped teeth by the end of the day, <laughs> because it's so cold down here, then I'm doing something right. Well, at least you got warm boots on down there. <laughs> she got a new pair of boots last night. Yeah. Second down and seven, Penn State at its own 25-yard line. Royster again, he got the corner, and he's going to be close. I think he got the first down, he did. Let's check our city X factor, and it happens to be number 22. And what he's done this year has been sensational. And what this is not a good start, Brad. As you mentioned in the opening, Penn State, for some reason, have had trouble against Iowa. Yeah. They've lost five of the last six. They won last year, but they had lost five before that in a row. Last year, they won 27 to seven in Happy Valley. Royster straight up behind his left guard, and he goes all the way to the 46-yard line as he's got eight more. Dan Lawler, the fullback, leading the way for him. Anger is the leading tackler for Iowa, and he's been something this year. 71 stops coming in to go with four interceptions to lead Iowa in that department, which you usually don't see from a middle linebacker unless you're named Laurinaitis or Maluga yeah, exactly. or somebody. Yeah. Second down and two as you look behind Clark and Royster on the Penn State offense. Williams in motion toward the ball. Gets it on the end around. Does it so effectively to the 38-yard line. That takes great timing. And Derek Williams, when he gets his hands on the ball, he knows what to do with it. Well, he's a senior, and he's been around here for four years. He's one of those wide receivers, Brad, that you just spoke about, Williams, Norwood, and Butler. And that is one of the reasons this offense is so dynamic. The passing to those three guys and the running of, of uh, Royster, this offense is just outstanding. That's Galen Hall, the offensive coordinator, right next to Joe Paterno at the 26 of Iowa. Clark, straight drop. And incomplete. Bradley Fletcher made a nice play out on the corner on Brackett. He did an extreme makeover on Kinnick Stadium over the last few years, and we got a gorgeous broadcast booth. Thank you so very much. Very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> we, are, sir, we, we, are, we are the highest place in Iowa, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> Second and 10. Royster takes it down to the 20, maybe the 19. Anger, the middle linebacker, puts the stop on it. So this is more like what we've seen from Penn State throughout their 9-0 run. 
Mixing it up, being able to run the ball. And Royster just hit the 1,000-yard mark. 12th guy in school history to do it. And they've had a lot of good ones along the way. The Lydell Mitchells and the Kajana Carters and all the rest. Huge third down right here for the Iowa defense. They've been out there a while. This is a 13th play of the Penn State drive. Stephon Green in the backfield. Royster getting a breather. He's going to get the call. And he cuts it outside, and he's got the first and then some. There's a flag on this play. He got it down to about the seven, but penalty markers, as Paul said, on the field. Offside, number 46 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. And the line judge threw the flag, and normally they'll throw it to the side of the team that commits the foul. Look at that red yeah, zone the offense. It. The wind took it, Grease. Yeah, the wind took it. That's a good idea. <laughs> 44 of 47 in the red zone. That's pretty good. Third best in the nation. First and goal, Penn State. Toss sweep. Down to the five, maybe the four. That's Derek Williams. They put the receiver in the backfield as a running back. It's his third carry on the series. He's getting more time than Royster right now. See number two, Derek, just taking the pitch. Well, there's no problem with him catching the ball. <laughs> Being a receiver. It was a quarterback, running back, all-purpose athlete in high school. Second down and goal, a seven-minute drive. Evan Royster back in at tailback. He's popped in the backfield, and he's dropped in the backfield. Angerer is there. So is Eads, and a loss of four. But the guy that really makes this play is Claiborne, number 94. He just comes through the gap, and nobody touched him. He's the guy that hit Royster first in the backfield. Claiborne is 94. Just watch him getting off the line of scrimmage. They don't, look at this. They don't even have anybody to block him. And it looks like they're bringing a tight end down to block him, number 10, Quarles, but he never gets there. Never got close to him. Third down and goal. Royster hitting the backfield again. This time it's Carl Clue. I'll tell you what, we've seen three plays in a row with tremendous penetration by the defensive line. And these are the guys that they really depend on. What you were talking about before, Greece, they're our basic. They just line up and they said, we're not going to try to trick Penn State's offensive line. They're too smart. So we're just going to line up and we're going to go at them. Third straight carry that they were stuffed for a loss and it forces a field goal. You talk about playing defense and being out there for about 10 minutes, Kevin Kelly. 14 out of 17 on the year. He'll try from 24 yards away. Kelly's kick on the way, and it's good. Well, Penn State scored, but that's not what they wanted. And you got to give some credit, a lot of credit, to the Hawkeye defense. In the first quarter, Iowa leads 7-3. And the Hamburg Inn, that's where you meet some important people. Most of the recent presidents we have even stop in for a burger there. Got a special table. Iowa leading 7-3. to three. And after Penn State had the ball almost 10 minutes, the Iowa defense forced a field goal. High short kick into that strong win. Better hustle just to get to the ball. Taken on the bounce. O'Meara, and he almost broke it out of there. Got out to the 39-yard line. Sean Green cuts back to the middle. What a nice gain. Out to the 46-yard line. Pickup of about seven. Sean Green, Donald Brown, Kendall Hunter of Oklahoma State. They got a big task at hand. He does tonight against Texas Tech. Most guys with a 100-yard rushing game. Sean's off to a good start already with a 14-yard touchdown today and 32 yards on the ground. Second down and a long three. This time, Green runs into a white wall led by Odrick. 
the 300 pound defensive tackle trying to get out of the bottom of the pile number 91. If you're going to defend against Sean Green and you want to make sure that you, you every single one of these guys on Penn State's defensive line Reese they have to stay in their lane they have to stay in the hole because this guy can cut as well or better than most. So what you have to do is basically stay home stay in your slot stay in your gap and don't let him cut back on you. Hey guys, I spoke with Sean Green. I asked him, what do you like most about your position? Breaking tackles. He loves the contact. He said, when I have contact, I feel like I'm at a higher level than everybody else. So that's what he's doing today all, so far, Brad. Iowa hasn't passed yet. They might not get this one off either. Stanzi throws it to the Penn State bench. Bowman and Josh Hull were putting the pressure on him. Ricky Stanzi kind of learning on the job, Grease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just glad to see him get up after the middle linebacker hit him when he was rolling to his left. But he is learning. He's inconsistent. He'll have some good games. He'll have bad games. Turnovers will bug him. Then he'll go a couple without. Oh, but look at it. Well, that one sailed into pretty much the crowd. 7-3 <laughs> three here. Royster. Powers his way through what looked like a couple of tacklers and got it out to the 38 yard line. Boy, that was a tough 13 yards. I'm not quite sure how he popped through all those black and gold jerseys. You know, Royster, you, you, you would think here's a guy, he's, but he's 211 pounds and he has a lot of power. Aller gets a good block in front of him. But watch this. The one thing about him, his feet never stop. He never stops his legs from moving. That's why he can do what he does. Nice balance out to the 38s. Derek Williams. They're going to run Derek Williams' legs off today, I guess, <laughs> from just about every position. Six yards on the carry again. Galen Hall, the offensive coordinator. Going to run it until they stop it, and then they'll go to something else. I really like that what Galen Hall has done since he has come, since he has come to Penn State five years ago. A lot of these young receivers came in about the same time. He opened it up, opened up to the spread. They had speed on the outside, speed on the inside. What do they call it? The uh, spread HD. Yeah. Second down at four. And it's Royster, and he's got a first down. You, know, you talk about the spread HD and Derek Williams and how he's been so involved. He explained to us briefly what it's all about. Spread HD is just getting all your athletes on the field that can change the game at any given time, you know, and um, that's the HD part about it. You know, it's changed. Get all your best guys on the field. Pretty simple, huh? That's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's right. And call the good plays. Yeah. Call those plays the ones that work. Galen Hall's been dialing up some pretty good ones. Midfield stripe for a first down. And Royster flanking Darrell Clark in the shotgun. Trying to bounce it outside and not going anywhere this time. Roderick Bins held his ground. The redshirt freshman number 91 and made the stop. You know, yesterday, Nasser, we had a chance to talk to the head coach and the two coordinators. And the one thing that came out of that deal was that, that Penn State, they just don't make mistakes. They're very confident in what they do. They know what they do. And they're a very poised football team. So you don't throw gadgets and things at them because they're going to adjust to everything that you do. But you better line up and hit them. They're number one in every offensive category in the Big Ten, except one. And number one in scoring defense as well. Williams again with the ball in his hands, and there he goes. Put the ball in your best player's hands. First down run for Derrick Williams. It'll bring the first quarter to a close as he picks up 11 more. He was in the shotgun that time. He was lined up behind the center in the shotgun. Second time he's run it from that spot, and he's having a good quarter. But it's Herky and the Hawkeyes has got the lead at the end of one. With LSU leading Alabama, it's Iowa leading Penn State. Maybe it's one of those Saturdays. We're not sure yet. We got a long way to go. End of one. Iowa seven. Penn State three. Not a cold, blustery day in Iowa City. It sold out Kinnick Stadium. The Hardy fans, they're not worried about it at all. And Joe Paterno likes being in the warmth of the booth. 
Somebody ought to tell the guy that's got the magazine to prop up the window next to Joe that we don't need a Tony Tiger Frosted Flakes commercial on here every five minutes. <laughs> they can prop that window up some other way. Yeah. <laughs> Clark, he's going to keep it. And a nice tough run. Clark couldn't quite find a receiver. That's what he does so well, though, and he picks up 12 yards on the carry, and Penn State keeps the drive alive. Welcome back, everybody. You know, you'd think a team having ball 13 minutes in the quarter that have the lead. That's not the case. Well, you're right. That's a good point. And they had 26 plays. Iowa only had five, but, <laughs> but Iowa's leading the ball game. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that Penn State will not make any more mistakes. <laughs> they, are, they are running on full gear now. Yeah, the first mistake of the ball game was in the first three plays, and that's what led to the short punt. And the touchdown drive by Iowa of Sean Green. That's why they've got the lead at 7-3. First down, Penn State. Now it's Royster. Trying to find a hole on the right side. Pat Anger comes over to make the stop. We check in with Stacy Dales. Well, Brad, I've been on each sideline, Iowa and now Penn State. And just a quick observation, it's so cold down here. If you go to the Iowa sideline, they've got portable heaters over there. They've got the ability to keep their hands and their feet toasty warm. Well, the Penn State players, they don't have any of those portable heaters. They're doing everything they can to stay warm, moving around. Not one Penn State player sitting on the benches. So you guys can see the challenge you face on the road <laughs> in a hostile environment. Well, Joe's taking a page out of Bud Grant's book. He's just be tough. Be tough. And it's only going to get colder. It sure is. Yeah, but old Joe's up in the booth. Clark skips one off. Andrew Corliss, the tight end. Had a little bit too much smoke on it, maybe. Not only is it cold, but we keep repeating. The wind is up to 25 miles per hour, and the wind is blowing from left to right. So the whole first quarter, Penn State didn't have it, but they had the possession of the ball for most of that quarter, but they were going into the wind. When we were walking into the stadium today, somebody should have had a camera on us. We were taking one step forward and three steps back <laughs> coming into the wind. That was McGuire, not us. <laughs> he walks like that all the time. <laughs> well, I caught my hair and it made it look like a sails. Third down and eight. Four wide outs for Clark. Darrell has a look. Throws completes. First down, and it's Deion Butler down to the 15-yard line. So Deion Butler, that is his 33rd catch of the season. It's the 165th of his career, and he's only three receptions from taking over the all-time lead from Bobby Ingram. The all-time lead. Yeah. Over here, just going to run a little hook, pick up the first down. Wind with you. One inside receiver clears. Just pick up the first down, get a new set of downs. We're down there in the red zone again, and we told you how good they are. Derek Williams in motion, gets the call, cuts outside, and he's down to about the one. <laughs> he might outrush both Royster and Sean Green today before it's over. Did you see the move he made, though? I mean, you know, when you look at his feet, when you feel, and you're a defensive back, you're coming up to make a play, and the guy freezes you. He just absolutely froze him. This is like a mean brother on Thanksgiving Day when you hand, he's going to give him a little leg, and then he's going to take the leg back away. <laughs> I mean, that is just, that's sad. Second down a goal. Royster, the eye back now, gets the call behind the line, and he's in for the touchdown. Just followed Lawler, the fullback, number 33. There they are together. Penn State's in front. And for Evan Royster, his 11th touchdown rushing this year. At the left side of the line, Cadogan, Ornbergers, uh, Shipley is in the middle. Oh, he just put his helmet right in his fullback's back, right between the two threes. And they power their way in for the score to take the lead, and that Kelly will try to make it 10-7. Right down the middle. Evan Royster, a two-yard touchdown and another long drive by Penn State, and they've got the lead here in Iowa City. And now the Hawkeyes behind 10-7. Another long drive of 75 yards, over five minutes. Evan Royster trying to warm up over there on the sideline. 18 of 32 plays in Iowa territory. They've covered about 146 yards on 30 plays and 15 minutes in their last two drives. Short kick, bobbled at the 14. Picked up by Hampton, Jewel Hampton, the freshman. And he's out across the 30 at Georgia. Green. Well, that's a tough couple of yards. 
There's Ken, offensive coordinator. Ten years on the job here with Kirk Ferentz for that same amount of time. Now it's Green trying to work off the left out to maybe the 48-yard line. Pickup of a couple more. Up third down coming up. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the half. Happy crowd here today having a good time. Iowa has passed Hello. only once today. <laughs> Appears that they're going to here. Stanzi. No, he won't. He dropped the ball and had to cover it himself. It was Audric that knocked it out of his hands as he went by, or Evans maybe. So a blown opportunity there by Iowa. And again, those growing pains of Ricky Stanzi. He had troubles like this last week against Illinois as well. Watch over here on the right side. That's Audric who slaps the ball. That's just a good move by the defensive line for Penn State. Donahue did not have a good punt with the win. Let's see how he does against the win. Watch out for Derek Williams on the other end because he can take it the distance. Well, it just figures he boom one into the win. <laughs> and I mean a beauty. Yes. All the way down to about the eight yard line. Great kick. <laughs> 49 yards into the win. a boy. 10-7 Penn State. I was hosting this year's Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament Thursday night. I don't know if it's an omen or not. Penn State beat Iowa 2-1. to one. They're the number one seed. They meet Minnesota for the championship tomorrow here in Iowa City. We had the Purdue team on the floor I was on in the hotel. I had to go through those gold and white streamers every time I got off the elevator. Yeah, I like that. You had to sing old Purdue to get to your room. You did. <laughs> First down, Penn State, Royster works his way to the 10, maybe the 11-yard line. A.J. Eads. Made a stop on him after he picked up three. So the last couple of drives for Penn State, 19 plays and then 11 more. Both covered over 70 yards. And one was a field goal, one was a touchdown. You got to hand it to Penn State, the way they started. It's like uh, they won a big championship fight. They got hit in the jaw. Yep. And they were staggered a little bit. And then they came back and they settled themselves, went into the, went into the win the first quarter. Coming back strong. Second down at seven. Royster again, weaving his way through the secondary. <laughs> He's got a first down. Hey, you know that tire drill you do in training camp? Race where you got to run through the tri tires? That's what Royster just did. He, that's why that they do that drill. They put a whole bunch of tires out there, you run through them. And watch, watch Royster's feet coming through this hole. Now watch him start stepping over people. There, come on. Step here. Uh, let me step here. Step there. <laughs> step in the tire. Out of the tire. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's what they they use it for. That's good. Didn't even put a stain on the white walls, did it? <laughs> no. They fake the end around and at Clark on the edge. Darrell's going to keep it. And he goes out in front of his own bench after a nice gain of about eight more. Brett Greenwood knocked him out of bounds. Do you have a feeling that Penn State Reese is doing everything that they want to do whenever they want to do it. Well, but they're not doing it in big chunks. I mean, they're not throwing the ball down the field. They're not getting big plays. Iowa is taking that away, but methodically taking their time. They're just taking the offense and going down the field. All right, I, hold you, I heard you in the opening. You said they need t style points to move up. It, are they getting style points? I well, think this is not pretty, but if they get 45 points doing this, and they, that'll be enough style points. Here's Derek Williams taking direct snap again. And now follows the fake handoff and got three more. How many times has Derek carried the ball already today? He's toted it seven times. Came in, as we mentioned, with 20 carries on the year, so he's up to 27 <laughs> and rolling along. Well, not only that, but he's got, you know, he's a pretty good return guy. I think he's got, what, five return kick touchdowns. return touchdowns in his career. He's got so, two this year yeah. and a punt return score this year. This is a complete Penn State team, not only offense and defense, their special teams are some of the best in the country. Derek Williams again at the tailback spot. Again, play action. Down the middle and complete Derek Williams. First down Penn State, the Iowa 27. So Daryl Clark dials up number two as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. On the day, Sean Green, a 14-yard touchdown, his 12th of the year. That gave Iowa the lead. 
Penn State came back. Royster answered, following his fullback for a two-yard score. That and a Kelly field goal. And that's where we stand at 10-7. But again, another long drive. Yep. 12th play of the drive again for Penn State. They've had one of 19. Clark, plenty of time all day to throw. And he throws a strike down to the 15-yard line. And it's Deion Butler. You know, that's if he, and, and come on, Norm Parker told us, he said, if we can't stop the run, we really can't stop the pass because if, if by not stopping the run, it opens up Penn State's whole game. And just take a look at what happens here. He goes back, Clark goes back to pass. There's a fake. Look at the penetration. None. Zero. He's standing back there. Those are all white shirts in front of him. There are seven of them, and he can pick out whoever he wants downfield to throw the ball to. That's easy. That was a heck of a throw, too. It was a good throw. Closing in on Ingram. Not worried about that right now, though. Derek Williams again in the backfield. Keeps it. Ooh. Got a couple and paid the price. Don't forget, in about two minutes and change, the guys will be along with a halftime report for you. Give you all the scores and highlights of the earlier game. Looks ahead to what's coming up tonight. Just about the time Derek Williams stand line, lines up at uh, quarterback in that direct snap, and they put up about eight or nine guys. He's going to pop up and throw that ball. Yep, he can throw it. <laughs> 14th play of the drive, another seven and a half minutes that the Iowa defense has been out there. Back to the spread for Daryl Clark. Pump fakes once, getting some heat, got rid of it. Incomplete, though, intended for Deion Butler. Mitch King was the guy that was in there giving him some problems. And Mitch King was the guy that was held on the last time. So he's the guy that's responsible for this third and second and long. Here he is over here. Gives him a quick move, just gets right around him. Doesn't quit. Doesn't quit. He's undersized for a defensive tackle. Usually those guys weigh 280 or 290. He weighs 265 pounds. You better tell that guy that's playing in front of him that he's undersized. Because <laughs> he's running all around him. That's right. The crowd now trying to get into it for the Iowa defense. Third and 19. Clark flushed again. Floats it out, completes it. Stephon Green got tattooed out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. So even though Penn State seems like they've had it for another hour, it's going to force a field goal attempt. So they bent and bent and bent, but they didn't break. Yeah, but the thing about Penn State, what they did here, they know that they knew they had too far to go to get a first down. So what they did, they picked up half of the yardage. Now they're in great field position for a field goal. Well, this, this was a little bit of what Kirk Ferentz was telling Stacy before the game. You know, we're a pretty good team, but we need some help. And that penalty was a help. 31-yard field goal. It's not the greatest spot on the field, though. We'll see how Kelly does. Does it perfectly. So Penn State adds to its lead. But there's only a one-play difference in this ball game, despite the time of possession dominance. It's 13 to 7. Let's check in with Stacy. Coach, what adjustments might you make offensively to keep your offense on the field more? Well, you know, we uh, didn't convert on two third and threes. Outside of that, that's about all we've had. Our, our biggest thing right now is getting off the field on defense. What adjustments do you make defensively having said that? Well, we're getting blocked right now, and that makes it tough. Uh, they're doing a good job blocking. That's where it all starts. Uh, you know, people haven't blocked us real well this year. The Penn State's doing a great job. We're going to have to get off blocks better and get to the football. Thanks, Coach. You saw that two-time coach of the year both of those seasons. Iowa beat Penn State. Right now, they're trailing at halftime, 13-7. If you're not wearing gloves today at Kennex Stadium, you probably got your hands in your pockets. It's getting cooler. It's almost the start of the third quarter, and it is Penn State bundled up in their park is leading 13-7. Temperatures dropping. We've had flurries on and off if you just joined us. And that wind's been whipping around today. Well, this offense for Iowa in, in this first series will set the tempo for the second half. They're going to get the ball first, and they have not had it much. They've had their longest possession today, Iowa, three minutes and 19 seconds. Jewel Hampton waiting on the kick of Kevin Kelly to start the third quarter. Kelly will be kicking with the win. Yeah. 
And it's a deep kick to the goal line to Jewel Hampton. Hampton's got great speed. Hasn't been able to use it, though, on his kick returns today as forward progress got him out to about the 20-yard line where Andrew Daly came up to make the stop on the special teams as we welcome you back with Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Stacey Dales. I'm Brad Nessler. You know, you have the ball 23 and a half minutes. You figure you're going to be up by about four touchdowns. It's just one play difference in this ball game. Well, you're so right, and but it's but it's all been Penn State. Right. Like I said at the beginning, they need to win, and they need to win impressively. And I think Iowa's got they've got to do something offensively. Yeah. That's, I mean, I know they haven't had the ball much, but when they get it, they've got to do something with it. They got it now. <laughs> Play action. Stands, he throws it right to Penn State. Tyrell Sales, the linebackers, got an interception. First turnover of the day. You want to know something, Ness? Sales makes the interception. He's the only one in the secondary, the back seven, that didn't have an interception going into this game. Now he has one. I don't understand this. He's trying to hit a receiver coming across the field. Sales is one of these linebackers inside here. He doesn't even see him. I mean, look, 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 look what he's looking at over here. I mean, he throws it right to him. I mean, there's more white shirts than there are black shirts over there. So an interception, a very costly one. Gives Penn State the football early in the third quarter now at the Iowa 29-yard line. Derek Clark might try to take advantage all in one play. Fires out complete. Derek Williams. And he's got it down to the 12, maybe the 11-yard line. Pick up a 17. Penn State in the first half. Darrell Clark, 7 out of 15. Royster had 65 yards in the ground. Williams had three catches, but he carried it seven or eight times as well. 47 yards. Oh, there it is on the bottom. Yep. Pick your part. Eight rushes. Thanks, guys, for 47. He just picked up 17 on the pass reception at the 12-yard line. It's first down, Penn State. Derek Williams in the backfield again behind Darrell Clark. They hand it to him. He's brought down by Adrian Claiborne, who's made some nice plays from his defensive end position today. Isn't it amazing, Greece, that you, you look at, at Iowa's defense and, and Norm Parker said, you know, we got we got to worry about Royster. Let's stop him. Let's not let Green come in and help out. Then we got to go to Clark and let's stop him. And then you got a guy like Williams <laughs> catching the ball, running the ball, and the only thing you're waiting for him to do is do what? Yeah. Throw it? But they haven't scored. I mean, they've, this is a this is a, nobody likes to hear this, but a bend don't break. You give up yardage, but you don't give up points. Second down and nine. The handoff to Royster, and he's hitting the backfield for a loss. Matt Kroll, number 53, the captain, and Mitch King, his buddy, make the play. Oh, Mitch King is, I mean, you know, you talked about him before Ness, and this guy, I mean, he makes things happen. He may be small, but man, is he quick. Number 47, he's the guy that changes the direction for Royster. Watch him. In the backfield, watch. Boom, he goes back, he gets a hand on him, and turns him right back into all of his players. You see his first move? He was a little arm over, it was past the center in a minute. He is so quick. A huge third down for the Iowa defense again. And they're going to bring pressure on Clark. And he's got to throw it quickly and did down to the eight-yard line to Butler. But it's not a first down. And we might see Kevin Kelly. He's already walking out on the field to try a field goal. You ask anybody, any offensive lineman in the Big Ten who the toughest defensive lineman to play or to block is, they'll tell you Mitch King. Yep. Just because of that, we just saw that series. The quickness, forcing the play. Everybody's got to know where he is. Kevin Kelly's hit a couple today. This will be a 25-yard field goal attempt. The snap was bobbled. They got the hold down, though. Nice job by Jeremy Boone. Bobbled a little bit, then got it up there for his kicker, and he knocked it in. Penn State takes advantage of the interception. They add three to their lead. Kinnick Stadium sold out today. Watch Jeremy Boone, the punter, who's also the holder, get this low snap handled. Got it quickly up for Kelly, and they just got the field goal off 
Or yeah. it might have been blocked. That's nice a, job by Jeremy Boone. That's that's just <laughs> that's Jeremy over there in between the equipment trunks, and he's got their gloves on, and he's got a parka, and he's trying to get out of the wind. That's a great shot there. But meanwhile, there's the heaters on the other side. On the other side. <laughs> Line drive kick, taking a yard deep by Hampton. Jewel Hampton. Got it out across the 25, maybe to the 26-yard line. They still don't have him down. Nice play fake by Stanzi, throwing on the run. Got his man, Trey Strauss, in a first down Iowa. And talking with Ken O'Keefe yesterday, we said, what does Ricky Stanzi do? Bob asked him, well, he said he really throws well on the run, and yeah. they love this play right here. Oh, yeah, for sure they do. Little play action to the left. He's going to boot it back to the right side. Short right there. The defensive back comes up. He throws it. That is, that's the best play that Stanzi has made all day. There's Get no outside. doubt about that. Good read. Moves it to the 39-yard line. That's the longest play of the day for Iowa as well. Now back to Sean Green. Sean Green takes a tackler with him down to the 33-yard line, and Iowa's got something working here. Josh Hull made the stop. 7.45 remaining in the third quarter. There's the offensive coordinator of the Hawkeyes with the headset. And this is probably the best-looking drive we've seen out of Iowa. Certainly the, the longest one we've seen from Iowa. Well, and they're in a situation now where they can run or pass. Now they're dictating to Penn State for the first time in this ball game. Sixth play of the drive. Boys and girls, that's the longest so far they've had it out of possession. Green, not this time. Aaron Maben, who leads the Big Ten in sacks and came into this game with 15 and a half tackles for loss, has one right there. You just watch this team, the Penn State, their defense. Watch how patient, patient they are. Maben is on the outside here. Watch him stay outside. His job is to not let anybody get wider than he is. So what does he do? He slides down the line of scrimmage, and he makes a tackle in the backfield. On green. One of our impact players making an impact on that play. Here's a big, big third down for Iowa. Three wide outs for Ricky Stanzi. Fires caught. Johnson Kilianos again. First down, Iowa. Here's a guy that had the starting job earlier in the year. He got a little bit in the doghouse. Had his job taken away, but he's playing like he wants it back. Yes, sir. Watch the protection up front. This line was not that good last year. He's going to find him right over here. Nice pitch and catch. First down. This is an impressive drive. I'm, we, ought to, we ought to find out from Stacy what uh, Kirk Ferentz said at halftime, <laughs> these guys. Four catches now for Johnson Culianos. Two of them on third down. Tight end in motion. They haven't used their tight ends much today. They usually do. Stanzi throws. Almost intercepted by Lydell Sargent. And Johnson Culianos is the... He fell down. He slipped down, Brad. Guy that uh, he was trying to get it to. Yep. Stacy's got an update for us. Stace? Well, guys, you may notice that starting D lineman for Penn State, Josh Gaines, not in the game. He rolled his left ankle. You see him here limping up and down the sideline, trying to regain some movement. And I watched the mouth uh, of one of the officials here, and they basically said he did roll that ankle. So I'll keep my eye on him and let you guys know when he's coming back. All right, thanks, Stacey. And you see him going to pick up a park or two and try to stay warm in more ways than one. Second down at 15. Iowa trying to put a scoring drive together. Oh, Sean Green has stood up in the hole, and I mean stood up by Navarro Bowman. He's another one of our impact guys. He's the leading tackler coming into this game. If you want to show a, a young person how to tackle, Bowman is the guy that you use as an example. He just stuck his head in, held his position, and stopped, which you don't do, stopped Green right in his tracks. Watch number 18. Step up here. Look at the squareness. Green goes nowhere. Yeah, that's a form tackle right there. Bowman was not a starter at the beginning of the year, and he just kept playing and playing and got bit better and better. And as you said, Brad, he leads the team in tackles. Third down and long now for Iowa. Stanzi is going to go deep. He's got a man in the end zone. Touchdown.
Darrell Johnson Kulianos his fifth catch of the day. This one's good for a touchdown. He's going to go down here and run a hook and go. He's going to beat Scarado number seven. He's going to go down, make the little stop and go. Scarado forgets about him. That was a two deep zone. He Scarado's got him deep. Extra point is good. A lot of football left, but the gap is narrow thanks to that guy. His fifth catch of the day, and this time he got wide open, and from 27 yards out, Ricky Stanzi pump fakes and says, I'm coming to you. 16-14, Penn State. They're jumping around again at Kinnick Stadium, and why not? Their Hawkeyes have cut the Penn State lead to two. Three third downs, all big ones, all passes to Johnson Koulianos, including the last one for the touchdown. Derek Williams from the 15. Look out, somebody tripped him up or he might have been off to the races. He got down to the 36 yard line. Now the Penn State offense. Clark on the corner, throwing on the run and in and out of the hands of an always sure-handed Jordan Norwood. That's a rarity. Stacy. Well, Brad, you saw Ly Lydell Sargent, and he really has an impeccable focus. He's been actually doing this throughout the course of the game. He, after that touchdown for Iowa, approached all of his teammates, and he reminded them. He tapped them all, and he said, guys, we're still winning this game. They had their heads down sitting on the bench, and he said, we are still winning this game. I really think it's just a matter of his impeccable focus, Brad. Remember, he had the interception in the end zone to end Ohio State's last march two weeks ago. Evan Royster got about five out to the 42. Matt Kroll made the stop. Here they come. Clark in trouble. Throws it in the middle, and it's almost picked off by King. Hunter and Eads came flying in on the blitz, and Penn State's got to give it up. But you gotta love this defense because what they're doing is they, they know they're gonna throw and they send their people. They don't blitz a lot, but when they do, they send enough. They send six. Look at this play, and Mitch King almost makes an interception. Jeremy Boone, as you look behind him now, with the win. Rodell's trying to get everybody out of the way, and it's going to roll harmlessly to a stop at about the 17-yard line. So you guys have had trouble kicking with the wind. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Well, that wind, actually, when you look at that wind, is kind of going sideways, and it, it, but I don't think, I don't think they're concentrating as much as they should. When you get the wind like that, you've got to concentrate on looking at the ball hitting your foot. You saw Deion Butler talking with his quarterback on the sideline as Penn State isn't often that they can't sustain a drive. They had to punt there. And there's a confused look on their quarterback's face a little bit. He's got a first down at the 28 yard line. The ball is out. Fumble. Penn State's got it. There's a flag on this play, Ness. Illegal formation. Fewer than seven men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. That penalty is declined. First down, Penn State. Huge turnover. When Iowa had the momentum and the ball, and they give it back to Penn State. First of all, they don't have enough people on the line of scrimmage, so this would be a penalty. But the, just remember what the other, what, what the coaches told us: we cannot afford to make any mistakes at all. And here is a huge mistake inside their own 30-yard line. Yeah, that's that's the, the center quarterback exchange. Either the center was trying to move and block his man too quickly, or the quarterback came out a little quickly. Royster now gets on the corner, gets inside the 20, almost 10 yards for him, following his fullback again. 33 is the lead truck, and 22 is the trailer, and they just keep moving down the field. If you watch Royster on that play, Ness, I know you were. He just is so, he's so patient. He just waited for everything to open for him. Watch him just delay. Royster is number 22. He's going to be coming to your right. Now watch him wait on the fullback. He waits on the tight end's block. Now he sees the fullback's block. Now up the field. Now watch what else he does. Now the cutback, and he picks up another four yards. 
Second and short, straight ahead this time for Royster. And he's got the first down at the 16-yard line. But here they are, guys, down in the red zone again. But every time they get down there, they've been getting field goals instead of touchdowns. Oh, Penn yes. State in the red zone today. 14 plays they've run, and they've only got 17 total yards. We asked Joe Paterno if, if sitting in the uh, press box next to the offensive coordinator, if he had, calls any more plays than he already did. He says, no, he says, I leave him alone. Every now and then I'll slip him, slip him a note on which play I like. <laughs> <laughs> I think you caught him slipping him one. Royster. Powers his way inside the 10. Greenwood, the safety, had to make the stop. That's Galen Hall on the right. Obviously, Joe to the left. Joe says being in the press box, it's good because you can see more and you can get a feel for the tempo of the game. I said, Joe, what, what do you miss? He says, I, be, I miss being down there on the field and grabbing those kids when they come off and looking <laughs> them in the eyes and says, come on, you're better than that. Line of scrimmage, the nine-yard line of Iowa. Clark's going to move out into a wing position, and Derek Williams will take a direct snap again. He's going to try to follow his blockers. Williams, touchdown. He's done it all today. Nine yards for the score. Ness, how about this play? What Williams does, he puts the ball in the belly series to Royster, number 22. Now, who are you really going to go after? Are you going to go tackle Royster, or are you going to wait on Williams? You really have a dilemma. Take a look at it here. Watch him. He just bellies him right here. Now, where are you going to go? Royster gets a block. He takes a hit, actually. And then Williams just cuts back to the inside touchdown. That was too easy. Kelly's for the in for the point after. And they take advantage of Josh Hull's fumble recovery. Derek Williams, who's Mr. Everything today, scores on the ground, and it's 23-14, Nittany Lions. The Iowa fumble led to a four-play, 28-yard touchdown drive for the Nittany Lions, who had only a two-point lead at that point, and now are up 23-14. Iowa's had two turnovers, both deep in their own territory. Penn State has turned 10 points, turned those two turnovers into 10 points. And the kick is deep and, and this one's non-returnable. One. First down, Iowa. John Green, maybe three. Abe Karoma made the stop. John's had a tough sledding day, 85 yards. He'll probably end up with 100 or more, but none of them have been easy. I don't know if he takes a hit or he gives a hit. <laughs> I think he gives more than he takes. The way he's running and how many yards he's averaging per game, he would be on pace for over 1,600 yards, and that would be better than all but Tavian Banks, who had a big year <laughs> in his career at Iowa. <laughs> You're watching Penn State, Iowa. College football lives here. Where every week is a challenge and anything can happen. What will happen in the fourth quarter? We're about to find out. Penn State by nine. Iowa needs two scores to pull an upset as we start the fourth quarter. Ricky Stanzi throws. Finally, they get one out to their tight end, Milwaukee. And Milwaukee gets positive yardage on the play. Well, fourth quarter yet to come. But we talked about it. Paul talked about the beginning. You can't make mistakes against a team this good, and they've made a couple big ones. Well, the thing about it is they're so prepared for everything that you do, and that's that's what the offensive coordinator keeps said to us, and also the defensive coordinator Parker. He said, you know, we could do some trick stuff, but they're going to pick it up because they know it. Green, boy, they have really made it hard on him. Sales, who had a big play earlier from his linebacker position, made the stop. Take a look at our ESPNU All-State standings review. Alabama and LSU tangled in a knot at 14. We mentioned Texas Tech and Oklahoma State on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Penn State leading, but it's a precarious lead here. Texas won big earlier. Oklahoma leads at Texas A&M, and they put a lot of points on the board always. And they just scored, we understand. 
right on cue for us. Green. Odrick. Boy, yeah. he has been a load today, hasn't he? He's been all over the place. He is just dominating that offensive line of Iowa. Odrick is 6'5", 303 pounder out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania. But he reads so extremely well. Watch Odrick. He is the big guy right in the middle. And watch when, when the guard goes down, he goes inside. Nobody blocked him. I mean, you can't miss him. But not that not that big. <laughs> maybe they so. want it. Maybe they want to miss him. Third down and eight. Johnson Culianos, the big play receiver today, is to the top of your screen. Stanzi's coming the other way, and he's got his tight end. First down at the 24 to Brandon Myers. I mentioned just a few minutes ago they hadn't been using their tight ends as much as they normally do. Boy, they got a big one there. 18 yards on third and eights. Well, you're right, Brad. They use their tight ends a lot. Just hooks to the outside. Zone coverage by Hull. Nice protection when you have time to throw and guys run their routes. It's pretty simple. Stanzi wants a throwback screen and got it to the same guy. Myers down to the 17 yard line. That looked a lot better than it ended up. <laughs> it really did. I mean, everybody went to the quarterback. They had a blitz on, they had the quarterback pinned in, and they had four offensive linemen in front of the receiver. Myers, and that's is all they got was about eight yards, and they should have gotten a lot more. Take a look at this. Now watch, look at all the black shirts there. I mean, he's got. That looks pretty good right there. Yeah, the old convoy deal. Now on second down and three, can maybe go back to Sean Green. Sean Green, first and goal, Iowa. What a big run by Green of 11 yards. Don't try to tackle Sean Green with one arm. You'll lose it. <laughs> Actually, more than one guy is helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Iowa's got it at the Penn State six yard line. First and goal. Sean Green again to the right side. Did he get there? For those of you just joining us from the Oklahoma Texas A&M Green game Sean Green has just scored from six yards out to put Iowa within three with the extra point pending. The Hawkeyes trying to pull an upset of the third ranked team in the country and they're within striking distance now. He went over 100 yards with that carry. Two rushing touchdowns on the day. Extra point is up and good. He's been the Iowa offense all year. And for the 13th time this season, he's found the end zone on the ground. And it couldn't have come at a better time or in a bigger moment. Here comes Sean Green. Don't go anywhere. We got a ball game going on in Iowa City. A big game in the Big Ten. And it's going to come down to a big finish now because it's 23 21. And Joe Paterno and Galen Hall and Jay Paterno up in that booth know their offense has got to produce now because their lead is only two. And they've had two three and outs in their last three possessions. Derek Williams can change a game in a blink of an eye. He waits on the kick. And he'll take it from the six. Nice job to bring him down as he crossed the 25 to the 26 yard line. Iowa comes up as though they may bring some pressure. Here's Green off the right side and Green with a great run. Nice second effort by the red shirt freshman and he got 11 yards and a first down. You know that's what I said earlier in the game is, is you change people in that backfield and just watch what happens. They, he looks 
He doesn't change much. I mean, he looks a lot like Royster. Here he comes up. He waits. He's patient. Then Green just breaks to the outside and picks up the first down. That's just outstanding running. Penn State at the Iowa 46 now. Derek Williams again they show the formation they scored a touchdown on this in this half now Williams is going to throw down the middle and Schuler's got it the tight end Bob Greasy told you about <laughs> an hour ago somewhere number two was going to throw a pass and it was 23 yards in a first down well you you got to give the credit to Galen Hall here's the guy right here just going to go down the middle but the but the guy lined up at quarterback was a high school quarterback. Now he does everything for Penn State. He's run back kicks, punts. He has scored on the ground. He's thrown a completion, and he's caught passes. That's doing everything. Galen Hall right there. And now it's Derek Williams again. This time, Pat Anger is waiting for him. Remember in the meeting the other day when the head coach of Iowa sat there and said to us, we lost one game because he went after to try to block a punt and we hit the kicker. Yeah. This may be the second one that he'll be able to talk about because well. that's what happened here. Kirk's Hawkeyes have lost four games this year by a total of 12 points. Right. Penn State has churned four minutes off that clock. We're down to 5-10 to play. Now Williams in trouble. You don't want to get too fancy here. A loss of a couple. Bradley Fletcher made the play. You know I kind of hate reverses in your own territory when you're going in to score. It just kind of takes you out of everything. And that play there didn't work. It was kind of a, an end around deal. It's almost like a reverse and it doesn't work. They're all sitting there waiting on you. Penn State is number one in the Big Ten in third down conversions. If they ever needed one they need one right here. Third down and 14. Remember they're playing into the wind. Does Norm Parker serve up a blitz here or not. Clark. Down the middle. It's intercepted. Picked off by Sash. Coming the other way. Grace, remember I told you I was down on the field and when they were throwing the ball from right to left, where they're throwing the ball here, the wind grabs it and right. it lifts it up in the air. Watch how far this ball is off target. That thing, he lost it when he threw it. He being Clark. If he just joined us, there is about a 25, 30 mile an hour wind going into the face of the thrower on that throw. Quarterback. Iowa at its own 29 with their offense now, with 3.45 and all their timeouts to work. Oh, but there comes Audric again. Sacking Stanzi. How quick did that happen? <laughs> where, where did the offensive line go? Was I don't know. A, was this a screen? Were they supposed to let him in? <laughs> well, Audric, just wa watch him. He's going to adjust. He's going to move over the center. Watch these guys. And then when he comes, no, he goes between the center and the guard. Nobody blocks him. I don't know. It was a screen. Look at these guys. They're downfield. You got to hold them for a second. <laughs> you talk about a three-step drop. That was one, two, three. You're on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those. I mean, the, the linemen just. You got to slow him down. Now Stanzi in the shotgun on second and 15. Plenty of time this time, but the throws incomplete intended for Sean Green, who couldn't hold it. And now it's going to be third down in a mile. You got to figure that Kirk Ferentz is thinking right now, we're never going to get this thing back. This is two down territory at third and 15, whether you're in your own end or not. And don't forget about your tight end. Well, both teams have three timeouts left. As you look at our little yellow dashes up there, those are your timeouts. We mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. Yep. Losing close games. They've got a two pointer here, but they've got a chance. Third down at 15. Ricky Stanzi in the pocket. 
And now flushed out of the pocket. He's going deep. And his flag, we're going to have a pass interference on Penn State. Pass interference, number seven on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Anthony Scarato, the captain, the safety back there. Let's take a look at this. When he threw this, I said there's no way he's going to complete this. Look at this. Scarato's going up for the ball, but he goes through the wide receiver, which you cannot do. He did hit the receiver before the ball got there. First down, Hawkeyes at their own 39. Sean Green. Green to the 44. Pick up a five. 242 in the clock running. Iowa down two. In front of a sellout home crowd trying to shock the number three Nittany Lions. These guys have been road warriors, Brad. As you know, four of their last five games, including this one, have been on the road. They've won at Ohio State. They won at Wisconsin. Stanzi throws to his tight end, and it's going to be really close as Myers forward progress might have gotten it for him if the linesman well, he's not going to put it down. Yes he is. It's going to be a first down and we're down to 145 in the ball game. Stanzi throws dangerous pass intended for his tight end and Navarro Bowman might have gotten a hand on it. That stops the clock 143 remaining. This place got awfully quiet didn't it. <laughs> Everybody's holding their breath right now, but the three of us and Stacy on the sideline. Tom Bradley, the defensive coordinator, hoping he can dial up either a turnover or a stop. Iowa needs about 25 more yards to try to get a kick to win. And this pass is incomplete. And Sean Green's dropped two. And Tony Davis dropped Green. Well, Sean is not a big receiver. He's only caught seven balls coming into the game. And here in the fourth quarter, he's had two off his hands incomplete. Third down at 10. Well, last time they got a big third down by penalty. Second half, Ricky Stanzi has been pretty darn good after a very troublesome first two quarters. He needs a play here. Comes the blitz. Stands a fire is complete. Myers has got it. And he's got the first down, I think. Oh, he does where they mark it. All he had to do was get it to close to the 39 or just across the 40 yard line, which he did. Two catches for Myers on this drive. 129 left and probably about. 15 more yards. Iowa needs to have a chance to kick to win. Stanzi in the gun. Troubled. Threw it away. Got rid of that one just in time. Maven and Evans were coming after him. <laughs> An undefeated season. And a chance at a national championship hang in the balance for Penn State. 66 seconds will tell that tale. It'll either be a dream that lives on or a nightmare in Kinnick Stadium. Second down and 10. Stanzi complete. Johnson Kulianos has got it. You know, it's kind of amazing what a quarterback can do when he has some time to throw the ball. At the 29 yard line, first down, there's the strike, Stanzi. And keeping the feet down, 
Johnson Kulianos with a huge catch, and he's had a lot of big ones today. First and ten, Iowa. In a hurry. Sean Green gets what he can, which is a couple, and goes down, and we're under a minute. We've got a timeout, 57 seconds. I don't think you want to leave your set right now, folks. Both kickers for Iowa warming up. Daniel Murray on the left, Trent Moss Rucker on the right. One of them maybe is going to get a chance to be the big man on campus. 57 seconds left, second and eight. Iowa trying to upset number three, Penn State. John Green brought down by Bowman, and he only got about a yard. Forty three seconds, forty two seconds. I think they feel comfortable in this area about kicking a field goal, Brad. I don't think they want to put it up. And that's why I think they're giving it to their number one guy. This is a if you join us, ladies, third leading rusher in the nation is Green. Third and six. Stanzi rolls to throw. Complete. First down and out of bounds. Johnson Culianos, his seventh catch of the day. You know, this is really a great call. I'll tell you why I think it is. You got him rolling out to his left. He's a right-handed quarterback, so you're asking him to, to kind of brace himself to make the throw. Watch him turn his body, then he makes a perfect throw to the outside. You know, a few weeks ago, Johnson Culianos was no longer a starter. He came to a press conference wearing a baseball cap and sunglasses. Kirk Ferentz said his style is not what we're about. He's been pretty stylish today. Yes, he has. Sean Green. Just trying to get it now in the middle of the field. You don't want to put it on the ground. So now it's not both kickers. It's Daniel Murray. The sophomore out of Iowa City. He's going to get a chance. Iowa. It's been a long time since they beat a top five. They want to run one more play. Try to get it in the middle of the field. Use their last time out and try to kick to win. Two tight ends. They'll want Sean Green to just put both arms around this thing. There he is. He actually took it to the right hash, a pickup of about three. Six seconds remaining and timeout. Penn State, number three in the country, hoping to not only play for the Big Ten title, but the national championship. And those dreams could die right here. Daniel Murray out of the hold of Ryan Donahue from 31 yards away. And you'll know in a moment if this one's good. High snap. Kick is on the way. It is good. Possibly shades of Texas Tech and Texas from a week ago. They're going to have to get everybody off. We've got one second left. The students realize that now and they scatter for their respective end zones and sidelines because we've still got one play left. Daniel Murray high snap Donahue got it down beautifully and then the euphoria. Ricky Stanzi he likes it too. Kick will have to come from the 15. 
because of the penalty. You know that Murray's going to try to squib this and keep it out of Powell and Williams' hands. And he does, and it's a line drive. And now the ball's in the air, and Iowa's got it, and Penn State has been upset by the Hawkeyes. State side all year. That's the way it goes in November in college football. For Bob Gracie, Paul McGuire, Stacy Dales, I'm Brad Nessler. Final score. Nope, you're not seeing things. Iowa 24, Penn State 23.